In the early 18th century, one of the biggest changes we see is that France has become the center of the art world. The French are setting the tastes, and they're considered the leaders in new and innovative styles of art being made. And one of the leading institutions of this new century is the Academy of Painting and Sculpture that was founded by Louis XIV that we talked about last week. In the early 18th century, however, there are two factions within this academy, and they are in tension with each other. There's a struggle throughout the 18th century to see which of these two factions is going to be the dominant faction. The first faction we call the Poussinists, or followers of Nicolas Poussin, and the Poussinists argue that the most important part of a painting is the composition, that you cannot truly understand or appreciate art without understanding the rules of composition and how a great composition should go together. The Poussinists tend to emphasize narrative, and story along with composition, and their works tend to be quite plain and quite easy to understand once you know the story being referenced. The other faction we call the Rubenists, or the followers of Peter Paul Rubens, and Rubenists are much more exuberant. They say the most important part of a work of art is color, and that really at its heart anybody should be able to connect to a work of art, whether or not you're educated in the ways of composition and these more obscure rules of art. And they see this not as the Poussinists describe it as pandering to the masses, but as a more inclusive kind of art. In the early 18th century, the Rubenists are in the ascendant. They're the dominant group. And the style that emerges as popular in the early 18th century is the Rococo. This is a style that is primarily associated with the wealthy French nobility, both in their townhouses in Paris, as well as with the Palace of Versailles, which we discussed last week. And the Rococo is quite unusual, because it's one of the few major artistic movements that's does not start in the visual arts, but starts in what we would call interior design or interior architecture today, as well as in landscape design and landscape architecture. In general, the, the word rococo comes from the French word rocaille, which means a little stone or a little pebble. And this refers to the natural or nature-based motifs that are commonly seen in rococo designs. And in its earliest form, Rococo buildings were often quite plain on the exteriors with elaborately decorated gardens. This is a period when it's quite popular to build a small cave or grotto in your garden, or even a false Roman ruin of a temple. And on the interiors, these buildings are often quite elaborate whereas the Baroque may have one big sweeping dramatic element or a, a big dramatic gesture within a work of art, the Rococo takes these dramatic gestures and shrinks them down and makes them much smaller, and then it typically repeats them. So we can see, for instance, in this painting, the decoration where the ceiling meets the walls is symmetrical on either side of the doorway. This means that to modern tastes, Rococo art is often a little fussy or overdone, but the focus is on small, intricate details rather than on one big, grand element. We also see that in the Rococo, there's a focus on the objects within the room, so there's often furniture becomes much smaller. Like the rooms themselves, the furniture is often extremely decorative, and it's movable. The same space may be used for multiple purposes. So a hostess may use the same room to have dancing one night, to give a dinner the next, and then to play cards on the next. And all of this is done by simply rearranging or bringing in and taking out certain kinds of furniture. In its earliest versions, the Rococo does not have a visual arts component, but fairly quickly that visual arts component develops as these wealthy hostesses want art that complement their expensive and elaborately designed interiors. 